today, which Muslims in the world are persecuted the maximum? Can you guess? Muslims in which part of the world are persecuted the maximum? Can you guess? From where? Myanmar. Palestine. According to me, today, maximum that Muslims have been persecuted is in Xinjiang, China. Uyghur Muslims. Yes, yeah, Muslims are being persecuted in Myanmar a lot, in Palestine a lot, but in China, it is on different levels. At least in Palestine, the Muslims can pray Salah. Correct? They can say Allah Akbar. They can fast. They can read the Quran. They can get the contentment in their heart. They are being persecuted without doubt. But in China, they are systematically trying to exterminate them. If you know history, in the middle part of the 20th century, you know, a lot of part of Turkey was taken over by the countries. Some part was taken by Russia, and this part, Xinjiang, was taken over by China. They're actually Turkish people, Eastern Turkestan. And they made it part of China, illegally. And many countries are doing that. You can easily make out the difference. You can look at their face and tell them these are not Chinese. But, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed that land with rich minerals. It has got wealth. So China is trying its level best to see to it that Muslims are exterminated from there. And they started in 2015, according to reports. It wasn't known to the world. It came out, some of the human rights organization came to know in 2016, and it came out in the media in 2017. It started coming out. It became more popular in 2018. What do they do? There are two types of Muslims in China. One is the, is the Uyghur Muslims. The other is the Han Muslim. The Han Muslims are Chinese Muslim. They have problem, but very less compared to the Uyghur Muslims. Because the Han Muslims look like Chinese, they have problems, but compared to the Uyghur Muslims, very little. The Uyghur Muslim nowadays, most of them cannot even offer Salah. They're not allowed to fast. They are forced to have food during Ramadan. Many are forced to have alcohol. They aren't allowed to learn Arabic. And if they don't listen to the authorities, they are put into concentration camps. The Chinese government says this is re-education. Re-education. Many of the Uyghur Muslims in these concentration camps, they are tortured. They are harassed. They are asked to give up the religion. They are asked to follow communism. And those that are outside, they are being tracked by cameras, by face recognition. And this has been leaked by the human organization. Almost all of them, they are non-Muslim organization. So much so that one month before, In July, 
there were 22 countries that wrote a letter to UN objecting on the human rights violation against the Uyghur Muslim in China. 22 countries. There are about 195 countries in the UN. 22 countries wrote a letter to UN saying there is human rights violation in China against the Uyghur Muslims. And do you know, out of these 22 countries, there was not a single Muslim country which objected. All of them were non-Muslim country, mostly European country. Isn't it a shame? There are about 56 countries in the world, 20, more than 25% of the countries in the world, they have majority Muslims. It were 22 non-Muslim countries who objected to the violation of human rights in Uruguay. And when interviews were taken of some of the heads of states, and some did say that Muslims are weak, it will not benefit as much to object. To tell you the fact, they may be right. What they're doing, if you did not object and kept quiet, they may be using the rule of the Sharia, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. The Sharia gives you permission in Islam, it's usul, that let a small loss take place to, to prevent a big loss. If you think by objecting, you will not get any benefit but there may be retaliation, there may be problem in your country, and if you do not take the best or the second best option of stopping with the hand or stopping with the tongue, you remain silent. This, if the situation is like that really, that if you object there may be retaliation, and if you take the decision of keeping quiet, Sharia gives you permission that among the 56 countries, no one had the guts. But 22 non-Muslim countries had the guts. Here, the story doesn't end. The story which is really disheartening is, few days later, 37 countries give a letter to UN saying what the Chinese government is doing is correct. They are not torturing the Muslims. They are not violating human rights. They are educating them. They are doing anti-terrorism. 37 countries. Out of these 37 countries, 15 countries were Muslim countries. More than 40% of the countries which supported China, saying that what you're doing is right against the Muslims, what you're touching them is correct, it is anti-terrorism. They were Muslims. Alhamdulillah, Malaysia wasn't one of them. I don't want to take the names of the country which gave a letter because I want to wake up the Muslims. By Allah's grace, I meet the heads of most of these countries. Whenever I meet head of state, my job as a da'i is to convey the message of Allah. Whether they follow or not, it's in their hand. I don't want to take the name because I don't want to embarrass him. But my request to the heads of states of this country that our beloved prophet said, if any Muslim is in problem, it is like if one part of the body is in problem, the, all the rest part, all the cells go to defend it. This is the Ummah. If any Muslim, he may be in any other part of the world, he's a Muslim, he's your brother in faith, you have to support him. How can you support the enemies of Islam just for a small benefit? This is not permitted in the Sharia. Keeping quiet, accepted. We are weak, you are keeping quiet. You may be the lowest level of moment, but yet you are a moment. But supporting a kafir who is killing your Muslim brothers and you're supporting them. 
what is happening to our scholars. I am not a scholar, I am a dai. The job of a dai is to listen, to listen from the scholar and convey it to the masses. The scholar may be very intelligent, knows Islam. The job of a dai is to make it simple and convey it to the mass. I am not a scholar, I am a dai. And I told this two days ago. And I am telling it again. That please don't exchange. What are you doing? For a seat in this world. For power in this world. For wealth in this world. You are exchanging, you're exchanging your seat in Jannah. And you are purchasing your seat in Hellfire. You are a very bad businessman. The Jannah is the true happiness. And I gave the details in the first talk I gave in Klantan on the 7th of August, day before yesterday. What's happening to the Muslim Ummah? We are deteriorating. There was a time when the Muslims were on top of the world. When the Quran was revealed, the Muslims were looked down upon. It was called as Yawmul Jahliya, the days of the ignorance. The Arab did the tawaf around the Kaaba naked. They were jahil people. Allah reveals the Quran and makes them the torchbearer of the world. The Muslims became on top of the world. Europeans called from the 8th to the 12th century dark ages. Dark for them, not for us. The advancement that the Muslims made in science and technology, it is phenomenal. We were on top of the world. Today, Muslims are in large number. More than 25% of the world population are Muslims. We are about 2 billion Muslims. But we are looked down upon. We are abused. We are criticized. We cannot do anything. Why? Because that time, at the time of the Sahabas, of the Khulfa Rashidin, the Muslims were close to the Quran and Sunnah. Today, we are far away from the Quran and Sunnah. At that time, we didn't have riches. We were poor. But we had the deen with us. Today, the Muslims are the richest in the world. We have the black gold. But we are looked down upon. Why? Because we are away from the Quran and Sunnah. I request my Muslim brothers all over the world. This lecture is being telecast to all over the world, alhamdulillah. Through the YouTube, which has more than a million subscribers, through my Facebook, which has 17.3 million followers, and through Peace TV English, which has 100 million viewers, Peace TV Urdu, 80 million viewers, Peace TV Bangla, 50 million viewers, and Peace TV Chinese, Peace TV Mandarin, 20 million viewers. All put together more than 200 million viewers, at least 100 million may be watching, inshallah. Here, mashallah, I'm told that there are about 100,000 people that have gathered here in the stadium. People on the ground, on the stand, about 100,000. But the message, alhamdulillah, is reaching to more than 100 million. Thousand times more. My request to the brothers and sisters all over the world is please come close to the Quran and Sunnah. Do not exchange the worldly power, the worldly seat, the worldly wealth for your seat in Jannah. Please don't.